Imagine controlling a character and as they walk up to a door, it opens automatically. Or maybe as they get close to another character, that character reacts or starts animating on its own. Well, making this interactive effect is actually pretty simple. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to trigger actions automatically when two objects come close to each other. And for this, we'll be using the distance event. It's a great feature for adding a bit more life and animation to your interactive experiences. For this example, we'll be using basic elements such as a sphere and a cube. Our goal is to trigger a simple animation when the sphere gets closer to the cube, making it change size and rotate. First, let's select the sphere and then add a game controls event. Click here to open the list of events. And right here, we select game controls. We can keep all of these settings just as they are by default. And over here in the camera follow section, set it to none. Now if we go into play mode, we can move our sphere around the scene using our keyboard. Next, we'll create a simple animation for the cube that changes its size and rotation when the sphere comes near. Select the cube and create a new state. We'll keep the base state as it is. And the new state will adjust the size and tweak the position a bit. We can change the size simply by adjusting the values right here. Then I'll just slightly adjust the position. And besides having our cube change size, we can also add a rotation change. In the state, let's set the y-axis rotation to 180. This will make my cube not only grow, but also do a spin. Now group the cube and name the group container. This helps us work in a more organized way and it's where we'll add our distance event. Go to the events panel and click the plus icon. Click to expand the list of event types and choose distance. Now let's just take a quick look at the settings for this event. And from, you can select and set the first object used to measure the distance. Let's keep the container with the cube selected here. In two, you can pick the second object to compare the distance with. Here, let's select the sphere. And in distance, this is where you can define the minimum distance between the two objects needed to trigger an action. The lower the number, the closer you'll need to get to the object for the animation to trigger. Let's keep it as it is for now. All right, let's jump over to the then section. Under target, select the cube. Next, set up the transition by choosing current, then state. The actions under then will be triggered if the distance between the objects is less than the value set. In other words, if the objects are close enough, the actions and then will happen. Now let's move on to the L section and select the cube as the target just like we did before. This is where you set what will be triggered if the distance becomes more than the set value. This time, set the transition from current to base state. So just to recap, when the objects are close enough, the actions in then will be triggered. And when they move farther apart, the actions in else will take place. Now, if we use our keyboard to move the sphere closer, the cube's animation gets triggered. Let's play around a bit by tweaking some of the settings. Now let's set the distance to 300, so the animation gets triggered a little before the sphere gets too close to the cube. And to make the animation a bit more playful, let's head over to the L section and switch ease in out to spring. That'll give the cube a nice bouncy spin. And that's basically it. So in this simple way is how you can make an effect where moving one object close to another with your keyboard triggers an animation. This event is ideal for mini game style experiences where interactions are triggered based on proximity. In the case of this door example, we use the same approach, adjusting the door's rotation in each state to create the opening and closing effect. So you can use a similar method for mini game experiences to make them more fun and engaging. You can also adjust the size of a secondary character so that when the main character or the player's character gets close, the secondary character stands out. 
And to make your experience even more immersive and fun, you can also add sound effects. To do this, we simply need to add a sound action to the distance event. You can do this in either the then or else section. By clicking on the four dots icon, you can choose a sound from the library or just upload your own audio file. Ouch. Ouch. And that's it for this tutorial. We hope you found it helpful and learned something new. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next or learn more about. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.